Bull, how you doing? Feel good. All right, all right, all right. Um, so let's just kind of start with the beginning. We got a lot of stuff. We only got an hour. Okay. Um, but, you know, you grew up in Spain. Let's talk about uh, Kangas, Spain? Kangas de Kangas? Narcea. Okay. It's, a, it's a town in the mountains. So kind of just shortly tell me about your parents and then uh, the little town that you grew up in. So I'm from, from the north of Spain. The state is called Asturias, and my town is called Cangas de Narcea. It's a minor town, like about 8,000, 8,000, 10,000 people. Uh, it's very into the mountains, so it's kind of uh, isolated for the rest oh. of the state. So we have our own traditions, our own mm -hmm. culture. Even the weather is kind of different to the rest of the state. My father uh, was a banker. Banker? Uh, yeah, my uh -huh. father was a banker. My mom came from a, a farmer, farmer family and ranchers. And but she she had a business when I was like 15, something like that, like selling perfumes and things like that. Oh, she had uh -huh. a, um, a shop in, a, in, 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 my, in my town. So I grew up with those kind of different cultures, like yeah. uh, the, the countryside with my mom, the, the uh, ranch, the uh -huh. farming, and uh, more like uh, economy size with, yeah. my, with my father. And, uh, and I imagine, you know, in Spain with like little towns and little villages like this, does everybody have chickens and little animals and gardens or no? Is it more civilized? And well, and, 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 uh, we are European, so we are yeah. civilized. <laughs> that means, not, uh, I don't mean like that. No, I, I, no, I, I, like, I have chickens, so I, 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 meant, I just think, you know, everybody's got chickens in their yard to like, you know. Well, in the, in the, in the villas, yes. In the villas, Definitely. Yeah. My, my grandparents have chickens yeah. and they have cows and, uh, and they have pigs. And yeah. so yeah. if you live in the, in the, in the, in the country on a, in, a, in, a, in a ranch or in yeah. a house, yeah. But in the towns, no. In the towns, no. uh, yeah. I was living in an apartment uh, oh, okay. with, with my family and we didn't have the animals. But we had uh, the weekends in the, in, in the ranch. All right. So now what was it growing, what was it growing up? up like you know as a kid is that fun you're in the mountains I know, it was badass do you think I, that's I, how you got your love for nature yes definitely no <laughs> doubt about it no doubt yeah. about it it's, it i was born between two rivers so oh, nice. the house of my family it comes from generations and generations and generations so uh, and it's literally between two rivers and i, I learned how to swim and uh, on the river and i was playing all the time with animals yeah. and in the forest and uh and hanging out outside constantly. Yeah. So the, the good thing living in a small town is when you, I remember my, my mom gave me, you know, a sandwich yeah. the whole day and you're eating the yeah. sandwich and then uh, you come back anytime. They are not worried because, yeah, things could happen to you like at her, but you know, that yeah. makes you stronger. Yeah, true, true. Yeah, back in the 70s and 80s, they, yeah. you know, parents just let us do whatever. Okay. Now we're all helicopter parents and don't, you know, don't even get a scrape on your knee. Yeah, yeah, no, it's not, uh, it's definitely in different times. <laughs> so do you ever get back to Spain and how often? Do you still have family there? Oh yeah, yeah, I have okay. all my family in Spain. Cousins, so all that good stuff. I have all my family in Spain and uh, I left Spain in 2011 and I was living three years in Mexico. So when I was in Mexico, I used to travel like a couple of times a year. And uh, here in the United States, I used to go at least one a year uh, yeah. for holidays, for. Christmas holiday. Yeah, yeah. However, during the pandemic, I couldn't leave the yeah. country, so it's been a while without going home. Yeah. And I hope I can go this this year at the end of the year. Nice, that's good. Now, uh, I'm go we'll talk more about this later. I'm just going to yeah. quickly touch this part. I'm going to be in Portugal and Spain later yeah. this year, and all I hear about is the. Café con leche. <laughs> Do you miss that? Uh, and how much am I just because I'm a big coffee drinker. Yeah, I'm a, I'm a, I, I love coffee. Indeed, I have one song called Café in Rock and Roll. And mm -hmm. I used to drink a lot of uh, Café con Leche. You don't have it here. It's kind of, well, it's just pure milk with, with coffee and sugar. And, uh, and you use it for breakfast. And yeah. sometimes uh, for, you know, after lunch, you can, yeah. you can take it too. So it's kind of very popular. That is still very popular. Yeah. You're going to love the food and you're going to love the women. There you go. I'm Dangerous. I'm so looking forward Dangerous to this whole women. trip. Dangerous women. I'm, I'm looking Are forward. you married? No, I'm single. You will. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Might come back with someone. Um, okay, so, you know, you're growing up in, in Spain, uh, mountain country. When did you, and is that where you went to school? Because I know you went to Madrid, but that was like when you are teen. How did you get the nickname Bull? Well, when, when we went into school and, uh, and um, we started learning English, but a little bit. We, yeah. uh, we speak very bad English in Spain. You can tell my accent. Oh, my, my, I speak very bad Spanish, so there you go. <laughs> I tried. Uh, so, you know, when you start learning a different language, yeah. you start with the colors and numbers uh, and yeah. animals. So 
the people start calling me bull because even when I was a kid, I was very big oh, yeah. and, and kind of the strong and super stubborn. You were always in the 90th percentile, <laughs> you know, of size. <laughs> so yeah. I get that nickname when I was a kid. Ah. So uh, And the people start calling me that forever. Yeah. So I use it for my band. I use it for my stage name. It works. It works. Yeah. Um, very good. Uh, so when, you know, you're a kid growing up there, you're in the mountains, are you, is it, you know, how isolated are you from, what, what kind of music is, you know, normally played on the radio there versus, and when did you come in contact with American music or even what was your first musical uh, influence that made you really excited? Well, in my town, we didn't have any record store or uh. guitar store or anything. And uh, yes, radio was kind of popular, but not really for music, it's yeah. more for news or oh, something talking. like that. Yeah. And we only have two TV channels. Yeah, the, the number one and the number two. That's, that's all. <laughs> hey, that makes it easy. So you can we watch. got way too many channels now. <laughs> you can watch the one or the yeah. two. So culture, like music and things like that, is whatever it was on TV yeah. is what really uh, gets your influence. And, and so it's mostly Spanish. And mostly Spanish, yeah, yeah mostly yeah. Spanish. But American TV get through all, all around the world. So yeah. we have a lot of... American movies and uh, but in Spanish. So if, if you oh, if yeah. you hear uh, 007 speaking in Spanish, Spanish. <laughs> or Clint Eastwood, it's funny. It's funny. So the, um, a friend of mine, uh, he me. Yeah, I always I, there was um, a compilation on cassette that uh, came out every year called Boom, Boom, mm -hmm. and it has. Mixellania music, it can be pop, rap, blues, yeah. rock, everything. So I remember it was a song from the Keys, Lick It Up. You remember Lick It oh, Up? Oh, yes. So uh, I was very, very young, and I didn't know how to say Lick It Up, so I say Kiki Loss. <laughs> so I remember <laughs> my father was driving the, the car, and, uh, and uh, I was asking, hey, can you play Kiki Loss? I was, Kiki Loss! Yeah, <laughs> yeah. And I ended up playing with uh, Ace Freely, the Keys get to play, so yeah. how the things are. So, my influence it was like whatever was on TV yeah. or on radio. Yeah, and Kiss was, you know, they were a very big band. I imagine you kind of singing Kiss like how I, like I love Gypsy Kings, mm -hmm. and I can sing some of their Spanish like Los Peces en el Rio, but I imagine <laughs> that I sound really funny to Spanish people when I sing it because I like kind of know the words. I know how to say it, but I don't know what I'm saying yeah, all yeah, the time, but, uh, you know. Now that I speak better English, yeah. I understand a lot of the lyrics that I used to sing when yeah. I was a kid, yeah. and I didn't know anything about right. what I was singing. Right. And now it's, oh, this is what it's about. It. So I learned how it sounded, yeah. but I know how it meant. It. Yeah. Um, at what point uh, do you, so, you know, Kiss and all this, you know, musical influence you start to get, um, at what point do you start really gravitating toward you know, either American music or just music in general to where you're like, man, I, you know, like, when did you get a first guitar? What was your first instrument? Like, how did that, you know, manifest? I was 14, 15 years old, and a friend of mine went to the city and came back with a cassette of Little Richard. Oh, boy. So uh, he played that song, Lone Tell Sally. And then it was like electric shock. Yeah. It means Little Richard is, is unbelievable. So yeah. l immediately I get totally hooked in that... Uh, Greatest hits of uh, Long Tall Sally, Good Girl and Be Small, Lucille, yeah. all the Little Richard greatest hits. And I, 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 I didn't know it was for the 50s, it was American or British, yeah. I didn't know. I, I, I knew Just I, like the sound. I, I yeah. love it, I yeah. really like it. So, the, uh, so I asking him, the, what is this? He said, well, they call rock and roll, it's from the 50s, it's an American guy. So they said, do you have more music of this? Yeah. So I was completely obsessed yeah. with the 50s. Yeah. So, we have a um, magazine, the magazine was called Disco Play. So it's a magazine that came every month by mail. Uh -huh. So you, you will watch, oh, read about the band read in, and, yeah. and you, can, uh, you can order. It was oh. vinyl or yeah. cassettes, yeah. vinyl or cassettes. You can order and take one month and a half to take to my town, <laughs> one oh, month man. and a half. Now yeah. Amazon is bringing oh, in one God, day. Yeah. So I remember going to American Rock and Roll. So mm -hmm. I was buying whatever I had, yeah. whatever they could. Do you yeah. remember what year, like roughly what time frame this is? 1958, 1957, uh, no, 1950, 1980. Oh, no, no, wait, no, there's no, no way. I thought you were talking about no, the, not the, the music, the, the time that you're buying. Oh, 1987, something like that. Okay, so I'm, I'm thinking of that kind of music. 1980, okay, gotcha, gotcha, yeah, yeah, gotcha. Uh, late 80s. Gotcha. 
and uh, because I, I was born in 1975, so when I was 14, 15. Yeah. So the and and I was buying whatever came from America. Yeah. I was completely obsessed with American rock and roll, especially 50s. Elvis yeah. Presley, yeah. Jim Beanson, Eddie Cochran, Little yeah. Richard, Chuck Berry, yeah. all those guys. I was yeah. completely obsessed, which is good because. That is the beginning of the rock and roll music, and uh, it's just the foundations. Yeah. And when you learn how to do that, yeah. uh, you have all the tools to I do I mean, all the people now doing music, they get it from that time period. Yeah, yeah. I mean, it's and every, even the 70s, every, you know, like, yeah. everybody's doing the 70s. Um, well, even yeah, Beatles and Stones, they, they, they get influenced by the fictions. Yeah, yeah, all those, yeah. So we were talking about the... That's the power of American culture. That's the power of American rock and roll. That a guy from the mountains in the middle of nowhere <laughs> yeah, yeah. get totally uh, hooked with that. So you guys did a pretty yeah. good job. Yeah. <laughs> well, and I'm sure some of us were stealing from your from uh, British, you well, know, Beatles and stuff like that. That was 60s. I mean, Beatles and the Stones. They, they, yeah, that was they after. Get, yeah, the, they get yeah. it from from American. from Americans. Yeah, yeah and it means Rolling Stones came from Muddy Waters and, and yeah. all, the, all the kind of guys. Yeah. So you're a teenager, getting into all this American music. Uh, when do you get your first instrument? And I love the story about how you raised money for this. Oh, well, I was, you know, when, when you buy the the, the, the the magic thing about the vinyls, when you get the vinyls, you have the picture of the guys. Yeah. And then and, and, um, you love the, the look. Notes, and I yeah, still have yeah. the, the pompadour and the hair. Yeah, and yeah. you love all that kind of things. And we start racing like American rockers, uh, like a cowboy boots yeah. and, and jeans. And uh, we were 15 years old. Yeah. And I saw all those guitars. So I convinced my best friends, like, hey, guys, we're, we're going to make a rock and roll band. <laughs> so the bass player. Uh, then you're gonna play bass, you're gonna play drums, mm -hmm. and you're gonna be the yeah. singer and guitar yeah. player. So the bass player was kind of the positive guy, and the drummer was the negative guy. And I said, "Bull, we, we don't know yeah. how to play yeah. an instrument. We will learn. We'll figure it out. We, we don't we don't have instruments. Yeah. We will buy them." Yeah. So we called the band the Phantom Sharks. Phantom Sharks. We were gonna sound American. Okay. Uh, yeah. And th this is a stupid name, <laughs> but well, it was what it is. So. If we Google Phantom Shark, we're not going to find any musical no, stuff. Sure. Okay. Definitely okay. no, definitely <laughs> no. So the, we were 15 years old, again, in a small town in the yeah. mountains. Uh, no record stores, no uh, music stores yeah. for instruments. So the, first of all, we needed money. Yeah. So in the, by that time, we went to high school. And in high school, we used to sell at morning, knocking doors and in, in, in a chorizo bands, you know, mm -hmm. uh, it's a breakfast band with a chorizo inside, and you you take like 100 of them, and you yeah. go door by door, and you sell them, and you raise the money for the high school trip at the end of the oh, year. Nice. So we were doing that for the high school, so I told the guys, what are we going to do this for to buy the instruments? <laughs> so we Love were it. months yeah. uh, knocking all those doors, uh, selling those chorizo bands, Lying <laughs> yeah, the yeah. whole neighborhood, yeah. uh -huh. <laughs> telling that we're going to a high school trip, mm -hmm. and and I remember my neighbor said, "Well, you're going too far this year, right?" Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So we were. Hey, you haven't left yet. We need to go on this trip. <laughs> yeah, this trip is gonna be. So we were selling months and months. Yeah. So we took a bus three hours to the city. Now, what what city is this? From your Oviedo is the capital of uh, Asturias. Okay. And I have a friend there because my parents we used to go uh, to Oviedo the weekends, and mm -hmm. sometimes I'm, I make some friends in the city. Yeah. So the, the friends in the city they were a little more a little more advanced of us. Yeah. That's, that's the thing because yeah. uh, they have more stimulus yeah. and uh, they have record stores and bands playing yeah. and things like that. So there was a shop that uh, even if you were 16 or 17 years old, uh, they can give you a loan. You, you can oh, sign. Nice. You sign all the mm -hmm. checks or whatever. Yeah, yeah. Uh, and so we went there with some money selling bonds, <laughs> and we bought, we bought a Korean guitar, Korean bass, Korean, and all the drums always the snare. Super small. And yeah. yeah. And we came back home and uh, with I didn't have even money for the for the case. I have it in a oh. in a box. We missed the bus, so oh. we, we came so late to home, like midnight. All the whole town was looking for us, and my father was so yes. angry. Yeah. And so, what is that? It's a, a guitar, it's an electric guitar. <laughs> <laughs> and then Barry said, "What are you going to do with that?" I said, "So he asked me, where, where do you get the yeah. money to buy that guitar?" So finally, moment uh, of truth. 
he was pressing me, where do you get the money yeah, for that? So yeah. finally I told him, they said, we were selling bonds. So I said, those are my clients. I am the bank. <laughs> you did oh, that. Yeah, he yeah. was so angry. Oh, you were, you were no. lying the whole town. And, and yes, we did it. So the... <laughs> who, 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 who else? Who else do you put involved in this? You know, you know, I tell the names. He called his parents. So their parents. I'm yeah, sorry. Yeah. So well, finally, it was my mom. He said, "Well, he he he, he get into this. Now yeah, he has to pay yeah. that guitar." Yeah. So we were working hard, whatever we yeah, can do it to yeah. pay all those instruments. But we didn't know how to play. He said, so you had them, and you're just we, we will learn. Yeah, we, we realized we didn't yeah. know how to play a single note. It's not just as easy as, <laughs> rah, rah, you know, on TV. So yeah, they, we, we thought that the guitar was plugged directly to the wall. Mm. So the, oh, did you not get amps? We, we didn't have anything. Ah. So the, um, we talked with my friend in, yeah. in, in, in Oviedo, and we came back again, and we bought a small yeah. mixing board, and we plugged everything in, the uh, microphone, yeah. the guitar, the yeah. bass, and we bought some manuals. Manuals, uh, how to oh, learn. Oh, manual. Uh -huh, manual, uh -huh. so. And that thing was, I remember playing the Chuck Berry albums oh, yeah. constantly. And so I was looking yeah. to, with my fingers and my yeah. ears. So we started developing good ears yeah, because nobody could teach us how right. to play guitar. Yeah. And you didn't have YouTube. Now you that can learn anything. anything. So the, it was like that. And then we met another guy in town. We didn't know him, that he had electric guitar too. He was a very shy guy mm -hmm. and uh, all the time playing his home by himself. So we added to the band, we changed the band, we called it the Dalton. And we were kind of one year practicing mm -hmm. every single day yeah. till, till we start playing. Yeah. That was Dang. That was so then, at, you know, once you guys practice for a year and start playing and you're singing, when do you make the move to Madrid? Well, once you get uh, 18 years old in, in Spain uh, and you finish high school, you're going work or you're going to the oh, university. Yeah, yeah. So there weren't too many options to work in my town, so I moved to Oviedo and I start working as a bartender, mm -hmm. uh, cleaning, um, dog shelters, whatever I could yeah. to raise some money. And uh, I was studying at the same time. And I was living there three, four, five years. And uh, definitely I'm still playing with different musicians. Uh, yeah. Some of them, they were kind of famous in Spain. And uh, I was learning a lot in, yeah. this, in the city. And I moved to Madrid uh, when I was uh, 25 years old. Because uh, that's the biggest opportunity to get a good job. And, yeah. and if you want to do something and in it was music, probably the biggest city in your kind of you know, northern Spain. The, Oviedo is the capital of Asturias. Madrid is the capital of Spain. Okay. So Madrid is the biggest city, six yeah. million people, and the yeah. biggest opportunities. And it's every very, very central. In, in Spain, it's mostly the things that are in Madrid. Is that crazy? Like at 25, like, damn, this place. You know, because you're like <laughs> from a little village. and Yeah, and suddenly yeah. from a village of 10,000 people, I was living in a big city of six million. Dang. Yeah. And, uh, and then it's when I, I create Bulos, Buffalos in Madrid. Oh, okay. So, uh, are any of those original? Who who were those players? When I was uh, when I decided to move to Madrid, a friend of mine told me, "If you go to Madrid, go to a place called and again American culture. Mm -hmm. It's a place called El Templo del Gato, means the the Temple of the Cat. And it was he said the Temple of the Cat, California cat." Cat, like a cat. Gato? Like a, yeah, gato. Yeah, yeah. Meow. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> so the, See, was, I know one word, gato. The, 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 yeah. You're going to do it great. We're going to we're gonna switch uh, to <laughs> Spanish for the for the rest of the interview. Uh, unfortunately, <laughs> I'll, I will just be saying, como se dice for every <laughs> question. Okay, well, that, I'm no. done. <laughs> <laughs> so the, the bar, it was called uh, El Templo del Gato, mm -hmm. a Californian rock bar. Oh. So the guy was living in California in the 80s. Yeah. So he get totally hooked with... 80s rock and roll from California. Yeah. So the, the the music there is totally 80s rock and roll. Yeah. It was Motley Crue, Guns yeah, Rats, Rosie, Scorpions, Rats, Scorpions, yeah, yeah. and uh, it was everything. Not only yeah. hard rock, it has rockabilly, straight mm -hmm. cats. He has everything. It was a great bar. So the bartender, his name is Antonio Verdi. He's from Asturias. He's a great guitar player. And he say, uh, if you go to Madrid, go and talk with him yeah. because he knows musicians. Yeah. So immediately. I drove from Asturias to, to Madrid. Before I get to the place that I was renting, yeah, yeah. I went to the bar immediately. Yeah. 
And I went to the bar and I say, hello, I am the bull. Oh, yeah, I think I'm... <laughs> I am the bull. <laughs> said, uh, I am the... I am Berlin. So we were talking all night and drinking. Yeah. Yeah. And they say, man, I came here with the idea to... To start, get, band, to start yeah. a rock and roll band. And uh, he said, okay, I play rock. And I know a couple of cats. <laughs> a couple <laughs> I, of cool uh, cats. Cool, cool cats. Yeah. So they, we were talking there, and um, there was a magazine. He said, why we don't call the band The Bull? And it, I didn't want to be so egocentric. Yeah, I yeah. am, but I don't want to yeah, be so much. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> so I want to name the band, too. And it was a magazine, a National Geographic magazine, with a buffalo on, uh. on the cover. And the buffalo was crossing a, a winter storm. And, uh, and the magazine say in Spanish, buffaloes, they, don't, they are not afraid of the, the, the winter. Yes, they go into the storm, right? They go directly into the storm to uh. cross it as soon as they can. Yeah. And that, man, that's yeah. the attitude they're looking yeah. for, this band. And so they call it Bully Los Buffaloes. The Bull and the Buffalo. Bam. Yeah. Yeah, I recently found out about that. I was a motivational speaker, and he was yeah. like, you know, don't be timid. If you face your fear. That's the right. buffaloes go, go right into it, and they get out of it faster. Yes. If you run from it, it, it it's, it's, it's in it's, you long. Yeah. It's raining on you longer if you go away from it. And, and it's the attitude it. that I was looking for yeah. with, for the guys and for the band and the message that I want to send. And yeah. Some people say, ah, oh, it's a goofy name. Well, and the buffaloes. No, it has a meaning. No, that's yeah. great. Yeah. Um, so how long were you in Madrid? Like, I assume you did pretty decent. 11 years. 11 years, okay. Yeah. So, and then you kind of get a following, you get a good, you know. Uh, yes, I'm, we start playing, uh, but uh, everybody had a side work in those uh -huh. days. So they, it was very difficult to put the band together. And you, you know, were into it 100%. No, no. When I, oh, when I went there, it, it was impossible just making money with okay. the music. Yeah. And Madrid is a expensive city. It's yeah. a European uh, capital city. So, yeah. so uh, I was working in many things. I was okay. a salesman. I was selling cars for Land Rover and, and Toyota. And then I opened my own company with um, off-roading expeditions. Oh, oh, nice. And then I was doing a lot of trips to Sahara Desert, Asturias again, uh, Portugal, and doing off-road, off-roading. Cool. And uh, so most of the time I was, I was traveling. Yeah. And, uh, and honestly, I, didn't, uh, I couldn't put the time that yeah. I wanted in yeah. the band. Yeah. So uh, after 11 years, you're like, I got to change my scenery, you know, w work on the career somewhere else. Did, and you went to Mexico, I understand. I went to L.A. Oh, L.A. first, okay. So this, we're talking about 2011, and I was completely convinced that, um, that I have to be in the United States. Yeah. I have completely convinced because I was always so influenced and attracted by yeah. American culture. And I'm talking about cars, bikes, yeah. music, yeah. outfit, uh, women, places. Women? women American too. women? Any kind, of, <laughs> any kind of women. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> American women, too. It is. So, well, because, uh, you know, sometimes the song, American Woman, Stay Away From Me, like, some people don't like the American women. They want their... No, I, I, I like the American yeah. women. Yeah, yeah. So the, um, the thing is, well, Spaniards are very rough women. So they're, they're beautiful, and uh, they are... Mm, you get the thorn and the rose. Yeah, I always was, was more attractive for a woman for other countries. Yeah. I think a lot of us do like something different. You know, and I like the other other cultures. And, yeah, and, yeah, and, it's uh, fun to learn. Yeah, it's fun to learn, and so I always especially attracted by Latinas, mm -hmm. Venezuelan. Okay, there you go. <laughs> so the, um, uh, I moved to. I, I really want to go, so yeah. I, I traveled to LA, thinking that. L.A. because he was the I mean, yeah it's a big uh, yeah L.A. Place. was the yeah. real capital yeah. Yeah. rock thing in yeah. the world yeah but that was the 80s yeah so I came like 30 years late <laughs> <laughs> so I went to L.A. I was a little disappointed honestly yeah. Yeah. because you know I was expecting a motley crew with Harley Davidson mm -hmm. and Sunset Boulevard and that was over and um, my visa in those times was only tourist visa so I only allowed you to be in the country during three months. And making some business, but no working. Yes, right, you, you yeah. can do interviews and tourists. Yeah, and yeah. so I spent two months and a half, and uh, there was time to come back. And uh, I was talking with a Californian production, and he told me, "I think you have a good style, but you need a bigger resume. Why you don't go to Mexico for a while and you do a tour?" Mm -hmm. And then, so that's what I did. I picked yeah. my guitar, two thousand euros, and a suitcase, and I went to Mexico City. 
Let's um, let's skip to because I'm trying to space out some of these songs. Mm -hmm. uh, let's do uh, De Niro Primero. Yeah. Uh, tell us about that real quick, and then they're going to play like about a minute or so. Well, Dinero Primero is my last single, and I think it's one of our best songs. And it's, it's a kind of blues rock, Texas, uh, CC Top influence with a little Spaniard touch. Mm -hmm. Dinero Primero means money first. It's not about, the, the song is not talking about materialistic uh, money. Mm -hmm. it's, uh, it's talking about the struggles of the musicians that we always have to get paid. I'm not ah. talking even to get fair. Paid, yeah, yeah. to get paid yeah. or to get that reward. And uh, we do this because we love rock and yeah, roll. Yeah. Uh, but we have to pay bills too. Yep. And, and you know, to play rock and roll is very expensive. Yeah. So the, the song is talking about that, like money first. Even if it's not money uh, the first thing in our life, it is now you, you have to hit a point when you're a musician that you need to ask for the money. Yeah. yeah. Is that the song about? Yeah. Can't always do it for free. Yes. All right. Let's go ahead and uh, play a minute of that. <laughs> nice. Okay, we got to talk about that style yeah. uh, video shot. Who did this? Who did you work with? Where was that shot? Well, uh, the director is called uh, Stephen Collins. He's down in Lockhart, Texas. He's he's fantastic. Yeah. And uh, this is a Texas ranch in Dime Box, Texas, okay. uh, where my friends David Vincent and Suzanne Vincent they live there. David Vincent for I'm, I am Morbid, the singer. So I was looking. I I really like Texas culture. Yeah. And uh, I want to do something like very Texan. Uh, we have the pump jack, we have the yeah. longhorns, we yeah, have you the... pulled it off. I mean, that was pretty Texan. Of that's a video. pretty to the pickup truck, and yeah. uh, so it was. It was shooting in a dime box, all in one day in a ranch, and that is a. Hellsville Jail. That jail is from the 70s. Dang. And the, well, the original is from the late um, 900s. Hmm. And then, uh, and, but the late 800s, no. 1900s, 1900s, yeah. yeah. And then uh, we have the jail and we have all the Texas uh, yeah. iconic themes. That's and awesome. uh, and uh, we have a great time. Steve is a great director. And yeah. We, we I, have love, a lot of I love that style, the coloring. We're going to do a little 70s. Really sharp. We, yeah, we went doing like a little 70s style. Yeah. And uh, the truck is from the 70s. Kind of like that movie-ish, you know. Yeah, yeah. yeah, it was a cool genre yeah. type uh, video. Um, let's see. Uh, so, okay, uh, you, you go down to Mexico, mm -hmm. do your thing, kind of get a good following again. Yes, yeah, so Mexico was great. I mean, we had a great time. I started playing a lot of bikers events. I play in the, in the biggest biker events in Latin America, like 25,000 people. And did you go to Me Mexico City? Mexico City. Okay, I yeah. was living yeah. in Mexico City and, and playing and coming back to Spain, Spain, Mexico, touring, yeah. promoting the band. <clears throat> and uh, we did it. We promote a lot of the van, and we have a good crowd and a uh, big resume. Yeah. Uh, we were in TV, we were, so we did it kind of well. Did you have any uh, anyone from any other old band, or do you always form a new band in whenever? Okay. Yes, I, I form a new band in Mexico. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, yeah. The, the guys, uh, we're still in contact with them. Yeah. Um, so then, when do you move back to US? We're talking about 2014. So this time, I have a 
very big resume and I won a couple of awards and uh, I was playing in very big, uh, so that was the time to apply for a work visa. Uh -huh. So I was applying for the extraordinary ability in the art of music. So I was honored with that visa that allows you to live in the country and working as a musician. Nice. So that was the time to move in uh, yeah. to Texas in this case. And why did you Why did you pick Texas? Well, um, a lot of people told me that Austin was a very cool city mm -hmm. and they treat musicians pretty well, which is true. And uh, yeah. people love music, a lot of live venues. Yeah. And, uh, and I, one of my friends, he was living here, so I came to visit him, uh, and I love it. Yeah. I, I was instantly. That's how we get everybody. You know, we have all these, you know, South by Southwest, ACL, all these people from all over the country come here, and they're like, damn, yeah. this place is awesome. And then, you know, I, I imagine the, the move in rate for Austin after a big event like that, just uh, over the next few, just always just sky high. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Now, uh, Austin, uh, uh, I'm talking about 2014, 2015. It was amazing. Man. Yeah, I love yeah. it. And I remember going to Continental Club, Seaborn, yeah. Saxon Path, uh, all the White Horse, mm -hmm. um, you know, all those iconic yeah. places and yeah. uh, amazing musicians. This, yeah. this, this town is very, very talented. I love how friendly, and you're right, you know, the Texas musicians, they're all tight. Yeah. Every, no, there's no, like, hatred or competition like oh I don't want to play you know like no they, you know, they open yeah. up for us we'll open up for you there's no oh they're better than us we don't yeah. want to be on the same it's all just so cool and friendly and everybody gets along I love that there's yeah. a sense of community yeah. and uh, everybody was trying to uh, I, I have to say that the uh, I have I have very good American friends. They always helped me a lot. Mm -hmm. So yes, yeah, so it's a trip that I did by myself, but I always found uh, good people uh, helping me in Mexico, definitely here in Texas too. Yeah. So a lot of good friends and uh, a lot of musicians. So I get in love with the city and yeah. uh, and if I'm play hard rock, but uh, Texas blues rock. This is not a very hard rock city. Mm -hmm. um, it's more honky tonk and blues mm -hmm, and things. Mm -hmm. But uh, even San Antonio like is pretty San hard Antonio rock. is more, yeah, <laughs> That's a hard San Antonio. Town, yeah, it's yeah. More, way more rocker yeah. than metal. I don't play metal, but yeah. uh, than than Austin. Yeah. Um, so 2017, you do Animal. Animal. And that you got uh, Road Less Travel, which, by the way, awesome. Uh, Hammer and Nail. Yeah. Uh, do we? Have, oh, we don't have that. Okay, queued up. Well, people can Google that or, or uh, YouTube it. Um, Let's let's also. I know we're jumping ahead here because we're trying to squeeze in time. Let's do the veil next. So set up the veil. Yeah. The By the way, awesome, awesome video. Thank you. Well, the the veil is also a film by with Stephen Collins. That he's again a great yeah. director. My idea it wasn't a futuristic uh, video. I love movies. Yeah. I really really like movies and. Uh, I told Steve, I want to create a cinematographic experience. Mm -hmm. I just want to just me seeing yeah, and play. Yeah. I have a lot of videos like that. I yeah. want to be, and it's, I think Escape. You can, yeah. yeah, and yeah. I think you can act. Do I don't know. <laughs> and say, I think I'll you give can. it a try. <laughs> Let's do it. Say, and he told me, what about be a bunny hunter like a Blade Runner yeah. and do, do yeah. retro effects? I said, Let's do it. Sound yeah, like fun. Yeah. So the, I grow that song. It's like Disney. a Fort Harrison, you know. It, Star it has Wars definitely has yeah, a little of yeah. Star Wars, a little bit of Blade Runner mm -hmm, '80s. Mm -hmm. So the and we we use giddy apps that I love giddy apps. Mm -hmm. uh, Nancy allowed me to shout the the honky tonk things there. Yeah, and uh, and I came out pretty good. Pretty good. It's pretty good. Yeah. Let's go ahead and go with the veil. Prison when I told the blind 
Come on. <laughs> Come on, man. That was awesome. Yeah, I love it. A lot of fun. A lot of fun in that video. Man. Yeah. Scott, what was, who is, what's his name? This Vale. No, no, the guy. The Stephen Collins. Stephen Collins, okay. The, the, and Lohar. He lives Lockhart. in Lohar. Yeah, Lohar takes it. Woo. He's a musician and also a, a filmmaker. Very cool. Um, so, uh, 2019, you do the single Death Do Us Part. So, well, Animal was, mm -hmm. uh, if you don't mind that I yeah, come no, back to no, Animal, no. I, I, I think because it was a, a point of inflection yeah. in my career because it was my first album in English. English. And then um, I had that song, Roll is Trouble, that I wrote it with Jayo Sanchez, the Kiss guy. Mm -hmm. We wrote that song together. And the Roll is Trouble is literally talking about my trip. Uh, yeah, uh, I, it hit home to me because I'm a traveler. I love traveling. Uh, you know, I'm going to be going to Spain yeah, later. Yeah. So, like, that song, I was like, oh, my God. I'm going to put that so I, I have it when I'm walking up the uh, coast it's of Spain. High energy. Yes. It's going to be in my, in my ears. Um, so I had that song, and I have a cover of Willie Nelson, Seven yeah. Spanish Angels, that I did in Spanish. Mm -hmm. I only had those two songs, and I met a guy called Raymond McGlamory. Uh, he's a good friend. Uh, he passed away last year, and uh, he was helping me a lot in my career. And he, he named a guy called Ellie Lloyd from oh, okay. KBA Radio and Rock Thirty. He's he's, yeah. he's over there. He's in the audience. <laughs> <laughs> so he's a rock and roll DJ, a legendary rock and roll DJ. And Ray say, hey, I need to send this to Ellie Lloyd because he has good ears. And yeah. So he sent it to him, and then. We have a meeting, L.A. Lloyd, uh, Raymond McGlary, and myself. And L.A. Lloyd came to me and said, with that radio boat, I like this boat. Yeah. So, so, <laughs> they said, this is a pretty good song, but do you have more? They said, well, no. They said, well, we need more. Yeah. So uh, I am start writing new songs. And then Rob Hinton from Mesa Recording Studios, good friend of mine, he was. So we, we call it the A-Team. Mm -hmm. Raymond McGlary, L.A. Lloyd, Rob Hinton, and myself. And I, I wrote the full album. I grow Hammer of Nail, Vampire Walk, uh, Invictus, uh, and then I call them and I say, this is what I have. Yeah. The, the, both, they say, this is badass, let's yeah. go to the studio yeah. and record them. So we went to the studio and record the, the album, and I, was, I wasn't sure if I could write something in English. Yeah, and you recorded this in Texas? In Texas, yeah. in, in, in Mesa Studios, and here in Del Valle. Yeah. I wasn't sure if I could write something in English, but, uh, I like it, yeah. and I think they're very good. I think it's a great album. Yeah, so now is. I'm writing 90% in, in English yeah. with some Spanish touch, but yeah, I'm feeling more confident. Yeah. Uh, what was the story behind Hammer and the Nail, or what was like? What made you think of Hammer and the Nail and like write that song? Well, Ellie Lloyd and Raymond and I, and we would talk a lot about the up and down in the, mm -hmm. in, in life and in the and in, in, in the music career especially. Mm -hmm. So. How difficult it is. Sometimes you feel good. Sometimes you feel that sometimes you can you do get it. Beat up. Sometimes you feel that <laughs> yeah. you 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 you, are, you you don't yeah. worth anything. Yeah. It, it's constantly yeah. up and emotional, up and down. So I was with the guitar at home, and I, I, I watch a guy on TV and say, "Well, you know, sometimes you have the hammer, sometimes you have the nail." There you go. And I was doing those chords in yeah. that moment, and they say, "Okay, are you the hammer? Are you the nail?" And, yeah. And I finished the song. Nice. And good thing about that song, I was. Completely sure that I want to put a Hispanic guitar oh. on the solo mm -hmm. instead of like a rock and roll yeah. hero guitar. Yeah. And we put it. William Knack was the guitar player and did a badass uh, recordings and he yeah. played the Hispanic guitar and also slide and electric. Yeah, that, that, that song, phenomenal. Um, I want to also get, it, get in all these uh, quick little videos. Let's, uh, Till Death Do Us Part, set that up. Yep. That's one of my favorite songs. That's one of my favorite videos. And this is on your new EP or whatever? No, that was two th after the animal. I, I record oh, oh, two oh. new, The Preacher Will Have oh, to yeah. Lie okay, Until Death was Par. Gotcha. And that's uh, one of my favorite songs. I wrote it for my girl, Jenny. That she's an actress. She's the girl in the, in the, in the, in the video. Mm. And uh, it's, it's kind of Western mm -hmm. rock, mm -hmm. Robert Rodriguez vibe, yeah. like a Texas border. And um, 
RJ, uh, the, Soch, the, 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 the last name is very difficult to pronounce, but uh, he did a great job to yeah. us uh, and in the video. We recorded in Austin, and I, I think it's a, it's a very dark and dense yeah. video, and uh, but I really like the mixing of the Mexican, and I put that Mexican Katrina, mm -hmm. because I am influenced by the Mexican yeah, yeah. culture, and also the cowboy, yeah. and the rock and roll, and it has a lot of influence in that song. It's a great mix. And, and, and she <laughs> traveled from, from Canada, and did the, uh, she was sick when she did the, the video, but she nailed it, so I'm, I'm very proud about that there video. There you go. Let's go. Nice. Yes. Yeah, I can see a little Desperado. Yeah. You know, it's a good Tex Maxi. Uh, that's awesome. Um, let's all, so speaking of band, uh, you have, when you are in Austin, you have a band. In mm -hmm. LA, you have a band. I was living one year in LA, and then I met uh, guys there. So when I was playing in, in the West Coast, uh, I needed a band there. So I started another chapter of Bull of Buffaloes in LA. But when I'm here in Texas, uh, I used to play with the guys here, Les Cam and Hatton, uh, Costamos Jacumis, and Jonas Sachs. Uh, but uh, lately, I'm more uh, I'm traveling a lot to LA, and mm -hmm. I'm more hooked with the with the LA band. And basically, I'm more focused in just one band. Yeah, I, I love all the guys that the, that we play together. They did a lot for this project. Yeah. They did a lot for me, and I, I hope I, I did good things for them too. And we're yeah. still good buddies. We're still uh, in in touch. Yeah, but um, I need to focus in just one band. It's hard to be spread out. It's yeah, yeah. It's, it's probably and good then, to be focused. So I'm now focusing Jim Barry White, uh, Bob Barnes, uh, Josh Foster, and Thelso Salim. They are in LA, and that's with the band that I'm touring right now. Yeah. and I'm very, very happy with them. They're working very hard. They, they, these yeah. guys, they can rock. Now, do you uh, do you have any dates set up over there right now, or is that being worked on? We, we are working in, yeah. a, in a new tour in Midwest. We are playing a lot. Of, we just came from Midwest, uh, playing there. So uh, and we're going to come back, but we can't announce the dates yet. Yeah, yeah. But we, we, we're working on it. By the way, uh, let's do a little name dropping. Uh, Ace Freely, some guy you might know, Ace Freely. <laughs> yeah, from the Keys. Yeah. How did, uh, that, how did that happen? Well, uh, last year I get signed with Paramore Records and uh, with the new management and new record deal. So uh, is there in they are in Wisconsin, mm -hmm. and, and so they are kind of strong in that area. And they told me, "Hey, do you, would you like to play with this free lady?" They were, "Come on, yeah, let's do it." So we were opening for him in Midwest, uh, Michigan. Uh, we were playing in Illinois, Ohio, and kind of. 800, 900 people, mm -hmm. 1,000 every night opening for East Freely. And man, uh, it was absolutely great. Yeah. It was great because um, you know how difficult it is to conquer an audience that they don't know you at all right. with this yeah. accent. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Who's this guy? And with this accent. Yeah. And, and with the, you pay $100 to watch uh, to, to, to a concert for East Freely, or now we did it with 38 Special too. Whoa. And then uh, you just. 
you don't care too much about the open band. So we went there, nobody was, so who is this guy? And I say, well, you're going to find my accent a little thick, but I don't worry, <laughs> we speak rock and roll yeah. fluently. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah. So they, I have to say that the Midwest crowd is the best crowd yeah. I ever played. Okay. And the, the, the guys, they were totally into us. Yeah. There were 40 minutes, 40 minutes selling merchandising. Dang. We sold everything. They bought CDs, hats. That's everything. awesome. And we only played 45 minutes, and with a 38 special, we played one hour. Yeah. But uh, we got everything on video, and we're still playing there. And um, to conquer an audience, they, they don't know mm -hmm. you with this accent. And yeah. these all American people that are, they are used to Ace Freely, right. 38 special, Leonard Skinner. Yeah. You know, those You're a little of, different than them. You're yeah, a little bit different. I, I would like to say that, uh, <laughs> that I'm a little bit different. A little bit different, but I tell you what. So I grew up in Kansas, yeah, Midwest, um, and I can tell you that you know why you're getting that good audience and that feedback is, you know, we get we you know back in the '80s and so we got passed over by a lot of groups. You know, a lot of the big they'd hit all the East Coast and West Coast, but you don't really. Not too many people play in Kansas, and if they did, it'd be like in one city in Kansas, where in other states, they hit like five. You know, in Texas, you hit Dallas, yep. San Antonio, so, Fort Worth, oh, Austin, Houston. you know, there's Houston, all these things. Kansas, you got one, so you didn't get a lot of chances to see. So we were always starving. Like, it's, it's we, yeah, we really appreciate, yeah. No, definitely. This yeah. is a fantastic, and you know, when you speak honestly, when you, and I, I think that our music is very honest music, yeah. because all the songs are based in, own experience and uh, yeah. when you speak honestly people i appreciate that yeah, yeah. and these days everything is fake yeah uh, instagram pictures mm -hmm, facebook pictures mm -hmm. you can mix um, auto tune in vocals yeah, yeah. Um, sometimes uh, you know like see, keeping it simple is the best and we would go you try there. to get all complicated and things yeah get all jumbled we go there we plug the guitars uh, grab the sticks and we yeah. play on his rock and roll and, and and rock and roll is a universal language yeah and definitely in midwest people yeah. down to earth rock and rollers so how was it playing with ace freely like you know i can't not hear that name and hear that the back in the new york groove you know and or well, snow blind snow blind he, he I, I have to say that he killed it he played yeah. very good and his band was very tight we didn't we wasn't in, in, in contact with him. Oh. Uh, I have to say that. Oh, so yeah, like he did They his treat thing. us a little bit like the, oh, you are the open bands, which kind of make us a little angry, which yeah. is good. So we went to yeah. the stay. I was talking with the band and say, yeah, we are the open band. But we're going to play like the headliners. Yeah. Yeah. So we went to the stage and uh, we have 45 minutes and the people was still asking for more songs. And we were the open yeah. band more and more. And then yeah. so the... It was, yeah, I'm very grateful that we yeah. could open it for him, but we didn't have any interaction with oh, him. Oh, that's too bad. Yeah. Well. yeah. Uh, let's talk about, uh, I want to talk about Alone with the King. Mm -hmm. um, a great uh, experience with uh, Graceland. Uh, how did that manifest? Well, I'm a huge Elvis fan, like huge. So Elvis was the guy that literally make me be a rock and roll singer yeah. and change the course yeah. of my life, yeah. literally. And uh, I was completely obsessed. I'm still with Elvis Presley. So uh, in the middle of pandemic, when the, I, I was camping and I read that um, Memphis was reopened, uh, the first, so I took my truck, literally, mm -hmm. and I mm -hmm. drove from Austin to Memphis, Tennessee. The first day after Tennessee State opened, mm -hmm. so I went to Graceland. And it was the very first day. The pandemic was still yeah, running. Yeah. And, uh, so literally it wasn't no one. <laughs> no not one. ready for you I'm guys. I'm talking yeah. about even one person. Yeah. So I was at the, at the gates of Graceland waiting for, I think I have to wait like one hour for a mm -hmm. big group. Mm -hmm. So there was a girl at the door. I said, well, are you coming or not? They said, well, what do you mean? <laughs> uh, yes, by myself? Yeah. yeah, yes, by yourself. That's awesome. And they said, oh, yes. So I get into Graceland. They close the door. And then I was there by myself. It was, I, what kind of energy? That has to be like... It, I was sh literally... Uh, yeah, I think I'd be feeling like just so overwhelmed. Well, you know, I was sweating. Texas, uh, Texas, <laughs> Tennessee is very... Oh, my God, humidity. it's muggy. Yes. It's mu and then yeah. I was shaking. I was, what do I mean? What I mean? I'm by myself here. Yeah, so yeah. I was like literally one hour. I went every room. I went to the, to the jungle room and mm -hmm. I was singing, oh! Like yeah. I was, and yeah. I was to the gray. I went. It, it was like a, an amazing experience, and uh, and I felt that uh, 
Elvis gave it to me as a present for yeah. so many years, yeah. tributing him, uh, playing yeah. for him. So when I was driving... One-on-one on one tour. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. I was driving back to Texas. And I said, man, I was along with the king. I said, whoop. And I, wrote, and I wrote that song. That's awesome. Okay, we're going to play this song and then we'll be right back. I was Man. wearing the same shirt. I need to buy a new outfit. There you go. There you go. Here, let me touch it. Ah, <laughs> uh, yeah. Um, let's, you know, you, you come with an entourage today. Yes. So, you know, you got L.A. Lloyd. You got uh, Penny Rock Productions. Penny Rock Productions, So yeah. how did you, what's going on here? So Penny Rock. What's, what's all the fuss? What's all the hubbub? <laughs> well, Penny Rock Production is a filming company here based in Austin, Texas. And they do an amazing job. And they just film a documentary about the back room. The, the, the I remember I, that. I can't wait to see that. Yeah. Iconic uh, yeah. venue and from the 70s till the 2000s mm -hmm. uh, here in Austin. And um, L.A. Lloyd uh, told me, you need to, to, to meet then John and Boudreau mm -hmm. and talk about So we have a couple of meetings and uh, they're launching the documentary in South by Southwest. So we ah. were just having a drink and drinks and, and we came to the idea that I think we need to share a documentary about your trip, <laughs> yeah. the role of travel from the small, the thing that we were talking about yeah, today, yeah. For how you came from small tiny mountains to play in rock and roll in the United yeah. States, in Texas, Midwest, LA. I was playing half time for an NBA game in San Antonio. And it's not, a, obviously it's gonna be a rock and roll documentary, but yeah. it's gonna be more talking about the struggle or the musicians mm -hmm. that, that you have to deal because believe me, it is a very hard trip. Yeah, like a yeah. very, very hard trip. Yeah, and especially every musician is, is, is a very difficult profession. But as an yeah. immigrant, you have to deal it's with harder. The, learning yeah. the language, learning yeah. how to write in a different yeah. language, dealing with the visa, culture, no family. So the, we're gonna capture all those things in the documentary. We're gonna to travel to Spain back, probably nice. Mexico filming my home yeah. and how part of the documentary is about how cool is American culture and rock and roll that mm. influenced not only me, millions and billions yeah, of yeah, musicians. Yeah. I moved to this country trying to live the, I won't say the American dream, but the American rock and roll. Yeah. Man, yeah, that's phenomenal. I, I, love, I love that they're doing that. That's so cool. Yeah. And, you know, you talk about how hard it is to be a musician. What about like insurance? Like what, you know, mm. well, how, do you, how, do, how does a musician even survive? Well, we don't survive. Well, no, that's what I was like, do you have a second job? Like, is this all you do? I, I'm a full-time musician, yeah. but I, I'm still struggle very hard. Uh, but at least one thing that Austin has amazing, it's probably one of the unique cities in the world that uh, they provide uh, medical coverage for uh, professional musicians here in Austin with uh, through HAM, H-A-A-M. Mm -hmm. And uh, that's fantastic because yeah. I'm from a country that the uh, medical coverage is free. Mm -hmm. So one of the, my biggest concerns here was that, yeah, yeah. I'm, I'm the bull, but what happens if I get sick? <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> so I get hooked in 2016 with HAM, and they're taking care of uh, medical uh, coverage and students. Not only me, I think 4,000 or 5,000, a lot of musicians in there. What is the... Um 
what does it take? Like, do you have to, like, is there any kind of proof or any kind yes. of steps you have to do to get? You insurance? have to prove that uh, you are based in Austin. Now I, I think they are opening the radius okay. for the surrender. They're opening the radius. That you are a full-time musician okay. and uh, that you have gigs, that you okay. are working and a um, certain minimum and maximum of incomes. Gotcha. So the, and yeah. speaking of shows, what? Uh, let's give out your website. Website is bulleatlostbuffalos.com. And there you can go to the merchandising website to the shows, uh, videos on YouTube, social media, Instagram, Facebook, Twitter. So through the website, bullerbuffalos.com, you can go to everywhere. And I heard you were on Sons of Anarchy? No, uh, I have music in the Mayans. It's the spin-off of Sons of Anarchy. Oh, the, okay, okay. The Mayans. I have three songs places in that Which division. Which ones? Uh, Caffeine, Rock and Roll, Invictus, and Deja Vu. Nice. There's two in Spanish, one in English. Very cool, very cool. Uh, what's next for you? What Do you have a new music video? Like, what's, what are you going to do next? Well, the, like I told you, we are working on a new tour. Uh, we are oh, yeah. very focused on the documentary. And keep breathing. That's, that's, yeah. my, that's my, keep your head my, above my, water. Big, my biggest concern is how to keep surviving and living. Yeah. Awesome. Well, man, it's so glad to meet you. Thank you so we much. We could talk for another hour, um, but yeah, we'll we're running it. out of time. Yeah. Thank you so much for being here. Thank you. We'll see you next week.